This was the final day after a long, long trial, one of the longest murder trials in criminal history. I can remember, as we're entering the old Bailey, there were little old ladies banging on the side of the van. Cues were right the way round the block. It was almost like we were celebrities, and they were fattening us up for the tribal gathering. You know, we were the main course, as it were. I was actually charged with murder. I was given a life sentence along with the Cray brothers. Although I had not taken any physical part, I spent 15 years in prison. There's a general invitation to a party. And I mean, this isn't said on the stairs, something else like that, get Jack, we've got to get him around here and give him a slap or anything else like that. It weren't a, a message from Reggie Cray that he came to me and said, Chris, we want Jack to have a little bit of a sort out, you know, take him away on the Wanstead's flats and put one in the back of his head, which you would think if they wanted to kill the man, that was the way it would be done. In a sensible way, he's done away with, he's taken away and disposed of. It was nothing like that whatsoever. I remember we went into the dock one by one. It was Ronnie up first. And he come down and I guess really set the tone on the day. What'd you get, Ron? 30 years. Well, I've just got to put my crews to the Bahamas off for a short time, but never mind, um, you know, we'll have a wonderful time when it finally arrives. With a smile on his face. Like, you know, it was just another day, it was just another event. I'm going to light another player. And uh, then Reggie went up, and he went up like a fighter, like a boxer entering the ring, you know. A uh, bit of swagger and stuff like that. And he came down. How'd you get on, Reg? Life recommended 30. Come in. And I was sitting in the cell. We were literally all in the same cell together. He said, don't worry. And I remember him putting his hands on my, on my neck and, you know, working the, the tensions out. And then almost like I was going into a fight, called up and up I went and uh, stood in front of Judge Milford Stevenson and he said, life with a recommended 15. I remember looking up at the dock, at the, uh, the, the public gallery, and my father was up there with old Charlie Gray. And I, I could not show my father that I was beaten. I couldn't break down. And I just waved up at him and said, see you later, Dad. I've been where Reggie Cray's been. 15 years was awesome. I could not imagine another 15 year on top of that. To take into account 30 years, when we went away, a Big Mac was a coat you wore. A chip was something you put in your mouth. Now, everywhere we look, there are chips which control our lives. Think about death and awful like 65, although he keeps himself fit and he's fighting it like he's fought time. But how long can you fight it for, you know? In that room that night, madness reigned for such a short moment. But that madness for him has not gone away. He must have died a million times in there. I did, I know. Sometimes I felt it would have been better if they'd have hanged us. A lot of people died that night. I don't think just Jack died. Somebody told me that Reggie Cray sends letters out of prison with a photograph as he used to be, not as he is, because he lives in the past. Now, my argument is not that he lives in the past, is that nobody will let him live in the future. Nobody will let him live right now. No, I don't think society knows Reggie Cray. I think they've been presented with a TV dinner. That's Reggie Cray. There's nothing else to him. They've seen the books, they've seen the films, but they were all made by other people.
they know nothing. They assume. And that's what he has to live with on a daily basis. It's where I had to live. And I look along this landing and I think about the hundreds, thousands that have gone behind the door of each cell. And how many people have been really rehabilitated? Not many. There was no rehabilitation for someone like me, as there really is no rehabilitation for somebody like Reggie Cray. Because we don't need it. It's non-existent. It's just a word in prison. We, we rehabilitate ourselves. We come to the conclusion of who we are and what we are and what's acceptable and what's decent, right and proper. I've seen the absolute worst of human nature. I mean, I had messed up so many people's lives. Eventually it got to the stage where I couldn't wait to get back to the cell. That was the love affair and I could shut the door and I could look out, look out the sky. I'd seen nothing of nature for years. But here I could watch the starlings and it never failed to amaze me about starlings. They could never be satisfied. The mother and father would run off and get them food, bring it back, bring it back, bring them back. And they forever had an open mouth. I watched robins and, and uh, sparrows having dust baths, things I didn't know birds did. And I just, I, I began to open up and I began to look at nature in itself. And I saw that things died and things regenerated. I watched a tree, you know, in the summer, beautiful green and the flowers came up. And in, 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 in the autumn, the leaves began to drop and they died and they went to nowhere. Where were the things of beauty? But I had to wait for another season for them to come back. And I found that in my own life. As I've lost things, maybe for a short space span of time, maybe a long span of time, but they have come back. The beauty has come back. It's about now and the few years that remain. There's always time for turning and getting back something of what you lost. group. It's called Praise Crime Lords of London. We're a friendly moderated group with over 1,000 Cray and other celebrated gangster videos available for view. There's also thousands of images in the photos sections. The link for the group is in the YouTube description section. I hope we see you